Hello, everybody. My name is Corey Stafford. I'm a knock engineer for RCN Technologies. Um, I started provisioning pots kits was where I got started with the company, and then I moved over to help support pots and other devices. So. Yep, excellent, Corey. Thank you for that. And then I'm Reed Perryman, uh, Director of Sales here at RCN Technologies, and we should have a good show for everybody on the webinar today. Hopefully, you've come hungry to learn something about how you can decommission analog copper lines, right? The FCC sunsetting those, or at least the support component component on those, and a lot of the LEX turning those down within the next 24 months. So any systems you have that rely on POTS, any system your customers have uh, for all of our partners out there on the call today that rely on POTS are in trouble. Absolutely, I'll do my best and word it as best I can here. Um, so POTS lines, plain old telephone service, um, they're old copper lines that were used for phones, alarms, and um, they typically go to a 66 block or a 110 block in a building. Um, typically uh, colloquially referred to as the DMARC room, or I think demarcation room is the other term for it. Um, and those old copper lines would run into there and then disperse throughout to give service to the analog phones. Absolutely, Corey. So to build on what Corey just said there, right, I always like to think of a POTS line as the old home phone landline, right? Back when everyone had a home phone, you had a copper line that was typically running along a telephone pole. And you can even look up on telephone poles today and see these big multi-loop rat nests of copper pots lines that are running every which way. But that is what uh, was delivered to your house for that landline. It was also delivered to your house to hook up that old gateway computer to uh, dial up internet and everyone, as I say, dial up is hearing that tone in their head, unless you're too young to remember it. But uh, that is copper pot. So what Corey said, typically running along in a loop on the telephone pole into your building, in the bowels of your basement, your DMARC room, your 66 block, basically your primitive telco switch to then be distributed out to phones in your business, to fire alarm panels, security panels, elevator panels and call boxes, emergency phones, old analog style phone systems, you name it, right? Here's the thing, there's still a ton out there. And so now hopefully that we've defined what a POTS line is, we can go into, well, it would help if I would advance the slide deck, but there it is, right? So there's the definition. I was just testing you, Corey, to see uh, how well you'd do. So, but like we said, it's anything from elevator call box lines to fire alarm lines. We even work with college campuses and POTS lines are running out to blue light emergency phone poles and stations. And of course, your old uh, trim line analog style phone systems heavily rely on POTS. You also have utility lines, HVAC, fuel meters, refrigeration monitoring, SCADA systems, out there for your utilities. I mean, the list really does go on and on and on. And if you're still on them, it's uh, it's gonna be a, a big problem, right? So a uh, couple other names here for POTS lines. If you call them something different, let us know in the chat, uh, copper lines, dial lines, telephone lines, analog lines, landlines, wire lines, or even the PSTN public switched telephone network. If you've ever seen a movie or a picture of switchboard operators, or maybe your grandmother or someone worked in a switchboard operating room like mine did, you know exactly what that uh, brings to mind for public switch telephone network. So let's flash over to the chat here. Corey, anything else to add about POTS lines in general before we move on to our next segment? Not, uh, not particularly, not at the moment. Yeah, well, I'm going to be leaning on you and some of your expertise. So why is POTS line replacement important? So Corey, I'll tee us off here with some general industry knowledge. But uh, when we consult with customers out there on why replacing your POTS line uh, is very important at a higher level, just overarching, uh, because this was the original internet line, this was the original telephone line. It had been around for years and years and years. 
since the 40s, 50s, 60s, and that remained largely unchanged for, I mean, 50, 60, 70 years now that we're in the 2020s. And the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, actually just uh, told all the local exchange carriers, those are your typical ISPs you think of today, the Comcasts of the world, the AT&Ts of the world, the Windstreams of the world, that, hey, we're no longer enforcing you all to support your copper analog networks anymore so not only does that impact your plain old telephone line or your pots line also impacts uh, business dsl as well because that's a uh, copper product as well but uh, what we're seeing across the nation is that because the local exchange carriers don't have to support them a couple things are happening right now first and foremost lines are getting old and SLA service level agreements to repair them are deteriorating. They're getting worse and worse. Uh, Corey, I know you talk to customers out there from a support perspective, but have you heard anything from customers out in the market, any of RCN's customers or our partner Artex customers about um, really the lack of support they were receiving from their previous providers before moving over to our platform? I haven't had the opportunity to talk to a customer regarding previous support that they're receiving for old POTS lines, but I do know that they're appreciative when we're monitoring and letting them know when something may be amiss with their kit or um, just giving them those updates of, hey, something's going on, I can help you fix it, or even to let them know everything's all good, you know, everything's green light, so... Excellent. So, and you brought up a good point there too. So I believe that's one of our next points. You brought up monitoring, right? So traditional analog networks have almost no visibility outside of your fire alarm lines and some of your burglar alarm lines that are being monitored by your central monitoring station uh, for both applications. There's really traditionally been no visibility. So that means that if you have a POTS line outage and that is connected to your elevator call box and the fire marshal for the state requires that elevator call box to have a functioning call box, therefore the POTS line function, you're actually out of compliancy, right? The fire marshal would actually issue a citation, potentially a fine, and certainly shut that elevator down, which you can imagine depending on the building that you are in for your business for your property management, high-rise apartments, that could be pretty challenging. So uh, there was no analytics. There was no notification system. A lot of customers have been used to, well, we got to audit our POTS lines again, once a, a quarter, twice a quarter, uh, once a year, twice a year. The main thing there is that it required somebody to truck roll and go test all of these different applications just to verify that the POTS line was still up and running, especially ahead of that fire marshal coming in to do his walkthrough, his audit, his analysis, and again, fines, liability, all of these things looming, creating risk for organizations on a traditional network. Whereas to Corey's point, moving to a POTS link solution, you can get monitoring in that real-time actionable intelligence, reducing some of those truck rolls, reducing that liability, getting that five nines uptime that we talk about in the wireless world, 99.99% uptime. So uh, increased costs. So increased costs, what we're seeing on average across the country right now, and it's different state by state, but all in all, you're paying anywhere from $50 to $150 for a POTS line. But here's brass tacks. My sales team talking with customers out there have seen price points of $400 a line a month. Out in California, $200. Up in Washington, uh, we've seen as little as $27, but only for some of the biggest customers with the largest volume of POTS lines out there. That means, just to extrapolate that out, out in California, if you're a small business and you have to have a POTS line, you could be paying $400 $4,800 a year for that single line, that can be pretty costly for your business. So, and keep in mind, 
most businesses have two different POTS lines. So when we say the FCC is not requiring the exchange carriers to support POTS networks anymore, this is one big way that those carriers are trying to encourage people to get off their copper networks and onto either a wireless solution or some other kind of wireline solution like broadband or fiber. So something to keep in mind out there, costs are increasing um, and that is a huge concern from a budgetary perspective from Susie's Flower Shop on the SMB side all the way up to your largest enterprise multi-location like a Office Depot or something like that, or Best Buy, uh, just to give a couple of examples there. So let's move to talking about Potslink. So Corey, lead us here. What is Potslink and how, what does it do for a customer that might be on old POTS lines today? So to kind of use the slide here a little bit, um, the Potslink is a very cool device to me. Um, it, takes a, an ATA to be able to convert from analog to digital and then uses a cellular router to be able to provide that cellular service so that rather than having to rely on those old copper lines that are coming into your your business or your home, well, not home, but business organization, um, we come in with this POTS link that has that ATA, it's got phone numbers attached to it so that it can still dial and be dialed. Um, and then with the cradle point that IBR 650 that's in there, uh, providing that cellular service so that they always stay connected. And the good, the good thing about the cradle point that's inside of the pods link is that it, from a monitoring perspective, it helps a lot to be able to have the net cloud manager aspect to be able to have that almost real-time statistics of what's going on with the device. Is there any problems? Um, it really helps for troubleshooting and just ensuring everything's all good. Yeah, so just to double down on what Corey was able to convey about Podslink, truly it is a powerful solution to transition your old analog wire line, right? And all that comes with being on a wire in terms of that telephone pole got hit and that took that copper line out, that conduit got crushed or dug up or whatever that looks like and moving it over to a wireless platform. This box does that, right? Potslink does that and to really key in on what Corey said, the cradle point IBR 650 within Potslink is extremely powerful. Not only is cradle point the number one LTE gateway, in the United States. So in terms of providing that wireless internet connection to some of your POTS connected instrumentation, it's the number one trusted, number one most reliable gateway. And better yet, it's cloud managed, it's cloud monitored. We can tailor a very specific alert Rolodex for that real time intelligence. Corey said, you can get in there and you can mate, uh, maintain the equipment, you can troubleshoot the equipment, um, you can update the equipment, all from a single pane of glass, right? We talked earlier that traditional POTS networks don't have any kind of monitoring or remote management or orchestration capabilities. POTSLINK does because of the power of the cradle point that connects it through its NetCloud Manager platform. More than that, the kit has scalability. You have up to eight lines that can uh, attach to a single kit. That means that that POTS line that has that unique telephone number gets transitioned right over to the POTS link kit by either porting that number and keeping that telephone number or assigning a new local telephone number. And of course, making sure that it routes to its intended destination, whether that's dispatch or central monitoring or the elevator company or back to the utility company that needs to check the fuel meter on that gas tank. And lastly, fire, right? We talk about fire codes. Potslink does include an approved NFPA 72. NFPA is, are the national standards for uh, fire suppression, protection, prevention. Fire marshals are going to look and rely on NFPA 72 codes to say that you're compliant. We have a compliant module within Potslink that satisfies any concern of a fire marshal if you're looking to transition that fire panel off of copper and onto a wireless and secure 
and code compliant solution. So just to dig in a little bit more, Corey, you said through monitoring and through maintenance, you've already seen some currencies for customers. Is anything that you would add um, to kind of what customers are seeing in real wor world currency by moving over to Potslink? So I think uh, kind of to speak more to something you've been saying with the monitoring and support that goes into it, uh, comparing it to the old uh, POTS lines, that having having someone who can reach out to you and tell you that something may be wrong or may be amiss, or if the customer is saying, hey, this isn't working quite right, that we have that pane of glass to be able to look into and be able to provide that support for them to get them back up and running. Um, and I find that really cool. Um, it's really enjoyable to be able to help a customer do that. Um, that's what I would add to to the, the support side and the being able to monitor, again, almost real time what's happening with those devices. Yeah, and, and I want everybody to not miss the, the moment Corey created right there, right? Because he's one of our Network Operations Center engineers that actually supports Potslink deployments. And his favorite thing here by moving to Potslink over your traditional analog copper network is that it enables, again, I'll use that term real-time intelligence, right? In real time, you'll know if there's a modem disconnect, meaning your wireless WAN circuit has gone down and therefore your POTS line circuit has gone down. At a single login, single pane of glass, we can look across the whole distributed enterprise, as many kits as you have, and see that they're all up at one time or there's that one squeaky wheel. We can even drill down on real-time cellular health analytics and be able to maximize the LTE or the 5G connection getting down to the POTS link. But you heard it the moment Corey just created is that he's one of our support engineers and it brings him joy to be able to support customers out there on the POTS link platform uh, previously where they didn't have a great mechanism for support, whereas they're experiencing deteriorating support SOAs from the current POTS line carriers. Um, certainly the other benefits, right? Reducing cost, gaining more control management visibility. All of these things swirl to provide a really valuable product, a really valuable solution for a lot of customers out there that are frustrated that they're still on a POTS line or being told by the carriers that they've got to get off or we're going to shut them off by this date that put in their maintenance request and it takes four weeks to go get that line back on. Customers that want to establish a result by removing all of those barriers to entry, all those pain points, heartburns, frustrations, but also get a great currency list, great capabilities and great support. It's happy to do it behind there. So what I want to home in on here on this slide, particularly, you should see a pop up in the left corner over there. We actually have a POTS line replacement calculator. If you're a customer here today and you know what you spend per POTS line for your business or your enterprise or your government, and you just wanna put punch that into our POTS line calculator, it's gonna ask the current cost uh, of your POTS lines, it's gonna ask the quantity, and it's going to generate a POTS link quote showing you how much you can save from an operational cost perspective by moving over to Potslink. It's a great resource. If you don't take advantage of it right now, it's on our website. So you can go check that out over our website, Potsline Replacement Calculator. It's a great tool to take into whoever's got to see that number to say, okay, enough's enough. We got to get off Potslines. So let's move on here. So, uh, we want to talk about a couple of use cases. Uh, this is actually a uh, deployment that I had the pleasure of partnering with. Uh, it was actually Hartsville Jackson International Airport. It is the busiest airport in the world, believe it or not, in terms of number of planes, both passenger and cargo moving through there. But they had uh, in their e-terminal at each one of the gates, right, where you go to sit and wait around until you load your plane, you've got the desk or the podium, as they call it, within the airport world, and you've got gate agents there. You've got your jet bridge, which is that big uh, bridge you walk out and get onto the plane through. And at each of those positions, the podium, two positions, and the jet bridge, one position, 
there are old analog phones at every single one of them. The airport had a unique challenge where trying to get some kind of traditional uh, broadband connectivity to move over to a voice over IP platform was just too challenging, right? It, it involved uh, resolving too much red tape, uh, dotting too many I's, crossing too many T's, disrupting airport operations to trench out conduits for new wireline to be laid. They approached RCN for Potslink, and we were able to replace every single one of their POTS lines in the E-Terminal, 84 total. And so if you're ever flying through Atlanta today and you find yourself in the E-Terminal, just know that every single phone at every single gate podium and at the end of the jet bridge is running off of the power of Potslink today. Uh, they were installed in December of 2021, and I'm happy to report we're seeing 98% uh, plus uptime uh, for their deployment. So that's pretty incredible, the amount of uptime they're seeing relative to time deployed. So uh, really, really great application there with Hartsville Jackson Airport. Also wanna talk about one other application. If you are a government agency on our call today or webinar today, if you are a school administrator on our webinar today, then know that we've worked with quite a few schools to replace POTS lines throughout the entire school district. Specifically, we partnered with Prosper ISD uh, in the North Dallas area. Prosper ISD had 47 locations and they had 141 POTS lines across fire and security and elevators, refrigeration, a couple other applications. And AT&T was telling them, Prosper, you got to get off the POTS lines. We're going to shut them down to the point of issuing termination notices. So they partnered with RCN and we've been able to deploy and replace all of those copper POTS lines with a POTS link solution two really great and satisfying results. Again, uh, average of 98% plus uptime over there as well, along with the monitoring, along with the support. And so they've been able to um, really net some savings, both tangible and intangible, no longer truck roll because they know exactly what's happening with their copper analog network. Nobody gets sweaty palms when the fire marshal is doing his walkthroughs before school starts every semester. So it's a pretty cool use case and we're passionate about partnering with uh, school districts on replacing their analog POTS lines. So Corey, you're on the deployment side and the support side, right? So what other additional services? We're not just going to have them sign a contract and send them a box and say, good luck, are we? What else are we doing for customers? So with our uh, field services team that we have, we also do site surveys um, so we can best scope out how to implement the POTS kit into the environment it's going to be placed in. Um, we install all across uh, the U.S. We, we've got a, a pretty solid field services team that does really well to try and uh, get out there and get those installed correctly and in the best spot. We we can do SIM swaps and those on-site configurations, OTA configurations. Um, it's uh, I'll, I'll move on from that one. Um, but the managed and post installation support, that's something I can speak more to. Um, with the tiered service plans, we I think the names we have landed on are basic, Pro and Plus, and I may have switched Pro and Plus, um, but those will get you different different levels of support. Um, basic will get you the monitoring, and then from there, uh, how how much we can be involved in the process of addressing an issue if one comes up. But we're always happy to help with any of those issues. And the twenty four seven proactive monitoring, uh, we've got a full team of people who are watching all day um, and then with the post installation of support it's that add-on to new purchases or existing purchases so if you're a customer that's in the the webinar that's already purchased from us you're already getting some monitoring and support um, and if you're a potential future customer you're more than welcome to have our support 
That's awesome. Thank you, Corey. So I want to make sure that, that some of these services that our team has provided is not lost on our audience today. So the first place that I'll start is that site survey. I mentioned earlier in our webinar that a lot of these copper pots line networks, especially if your building is uh, was built in the 40s or the 50s or the 60s, they were uh, set up and installed almost, gosh, 80 years ago in some cases right now and you can imagine through the years up until present day so many hands have been in the cookie jar right on reorganizing those pot signs and rerunning those pot signs and changing providers and moving back to the old provider so on and so forth and so sometimes it's a true uh feat it's a true labor to figure out okay according to where my copper is coming into my building that's great i know where that is but how do i trace based on these ports on the 66 block, this telco block, this DMARC point, whatever you're gonna call it, what line goes out to my elevator? What line goes out to my fire panel? What line goes out to my uh, phone system? Our team is specially trained to come in and assess that with a site survey. So when they leave that site survey, you know exactly which port is connected to what use case on the other end of that twisted pair pull out to that elevator, that fire alarm, so on and so forth. That's a very valuable resource. There are not a lot of qualified telecom teams out there that specialize in being able to pin tone and test out and trace POTS lines from uh, the basement, right? The bowels of your building, excuse me, all the way out to the end point. So I don't want that to be lost on everybody. More than that, we'll also site survey because we're using cellular to connect your POTS lines at this point. We'll do a cellular health survey at the point of installation. If we determine that the signal is poor because it's in the basement or it's in the middle of the building and the walls are laced with rebar because we're in Texas and schools or other buildings are built to withstand tornadoes, we'll assess that, hey, maybe we need that external antenna. More than that, we'll determine where's the nearest viable conduit to run that antenna out to an external wall or the roof. Where's the nearest cellular tower that we can point that antenna at to make sure we get reliable connectivity at all times down to that cradle point endpoint within the Potslink solution. And so after we do all that, we're gonna install, right? We're gonna install, we're gonna configure, we're gonna make sure your phone lines are either ported or set up net new and they're pointed at the in-place destinations that they need to get to to maintain some of your most mission critical operations uh, to your facilities and otherwise. But I didn't want that to be lost on anybody. Corey and his team do an incredible job, not only on the configuration side, but also that post sales support side. He is right. He said 24 hours, it's no joke. Uh, I'm up at 1 a.m. on my phone because I can't sleep and I see our network operation team vigilant all the time in the middle of the night, letting customers know that, hey, there was an outage here, letting them know when it's resolved as well. So you can trust our team with your uptime. Again, for some of your most mission critical, liability driven applications, fire, elevator, security, just to name a few, emergency phones, so on and so forth. So it really is an exciting uh, service suite that comes with customers of Potslink. So winding down here, I'll, I'll take us on the home stretch. How can RCN help, right? We always tell people that we are 5G and LTE enablement specialists. The Cradle Point 650 in our Potslink is an LTE enabled device. That means it gets out to the internet, sends all of your uh, security panel uh, updates and alerts and all your fire panel notifications, really the whole spectrum out to the internet via LTE via 4G. So what does enablement mean? It simply means this. Uh, we're highly certified in the product that we deploy. We're highly certified in the carrier networks. We're highly certified in radio frequency or RF, uh, which is essentially cellular. And using those three areas of expertise, we combine everything down to make the wireless work in your environment, right? Because every single environment's different from the rebar in the wall I mentioned earlier to where your DMARC's located, so on and so forth. So that's what we mean. And more than that, once we have it up and running, we're pretty darn good at keeping it that way to 
uh, Corey can attest to that personally. It even brings a smile to his face to help our customers. So that's us, that's who we are. Partner with us, we can consult with you. We can give you valuable ideas if you visit with us to ensure that you have a strategy to get off your copper pots lines before you start experiencing some of that heartburn we talked about a lot earlier in our session. We're happy to do it too. Uh, you can follow us more uh, on LinkedIn, right? For latest industry updates, product updates, webinars, our marketing team slaves away on our LinkedIn page. They're quite good at what they do, updating constantly, giving those value nuggets to our customers and our partners alike on how they can win for their customers or how if you're a customer, you can win for your business. So go check us out on LinkedIn and give us a follow because we're just now getting to the Q&A. So landing in right on time. So I'm going to read the question out loud. You didn't tell me how it works. Do I point the POTS line numbers to your portal and, your, and you use VoIP line? Sorry, having a little trouble translating here. I think some keyboard errors, but uh, I think the gist of the question is, when we transition the POTS lines, right, what solution are we using to convert that signal that's traditionally analog over to a digital IP addressable signal and then out to its intended destination? So, Corey, I'll let you take first stab at this. What are we using under the hood of POTS link to make sure that analog signal gets out to the internet over wireless? So, the, the way that that works um, is that's what the ATA is in the POTS link for. Um, it's getting its internet connection from that cradle point, getting the cellular service into it. And it's got ports for you to plug into and it will take those old analog, analog data, it hits the ATA and the ATA has phone numbers attached to each port and it will send it out digitally to, to the, or is it the other way? No, you I mean, got it. You okay. Know. I was going to yep. say, I couldn't remember if I flipped it there. But that that's how I understand how that works. Yep. yep. Yeah, so uh, Corey's absolutely correct, right? We have a ATA analog telephone adapter. It acts basically as a dial tone gateway. The thing about a POTS line is that it's a plain old telephony line. We talked about how that was your original landline house line phone, right? There's a phone number writing onto it. So uh, if we're going to remove your POTS lines and connect them to a new solution, we have to carry a phone number mechanism over. These endpoint instruments, the fire panel, the elevator call box, the emergency phone, don't stop using dial tone. So we have to emulate that, but we have to take it from analog over to digital, push it out over LTE. So that's what we're doing. We're using that ATA device. It converts that signal over to digital. It engages a, a session initiation protocol or SIP right, which is attached to a phone number, which then makes that call, routes that call over the internet via that cradle point IBR 650C gateway. So when I say you can port and keep your number, you can get a new number, just know that you're going from a dial tone mechanism to a dial tone mechanism, or keeping that nice, tidy and consistent under the hood of POTS link. So I believe we have a couple other questions. Um, one question is, does installation require a complete shutdown of my current system? And the answer is no. No, it does not. We do not need to shut down your system in order to migrate you over to Potslink. In fact, what we consult and recommend to our customers is that until we have installed Potslink, until we have verified successful outbound calling to the destination points, do not approach your LEC to cancel your legacy POTS lines because if something goes wrong during the installation, we got to reconfigure or come back out after deploying an antenna, then you want to remain connected. So typically we get the whole thing done, we verify success, and then we tell you hit the big red button. Tell your carrier we want to eliminate. Another thing, a lot of customers will port their POTS lines. If you've ever ported a telecom line, I'm sorry, first of all, it's a painful process. I wish it were simpler, but typically it can be a two to four week process, depending on your uh, carrier that you're transitioning away from, 
their level of engagement. So what we always do in that circumstance is while we're working on the port and waiting for the port to uh, go through, we always uh, basically have the number forwarded to the new number, right? So we still, you know, your, your endpoint systems are still communicating with your legacy number, but we set up a new number that's just forwarding its call to your legacy number until that port takes place and we don't have to have that forwarding mechanism set up in our call flow GUI anymore. So we've got you covered there as well. Um, Corey, did I get anything wrong there? I, I believe that's what we do typically during a porting process. That sounded pretty spot on to me, especially the part of how painful it can be. Yep, absolutely. So uh, one last question here. How many lines can a single POTS link convert? The answer is eight on a single unit, a total of eight. So that means if you have four lines in one building, one kit is all you need. That means if you have six lines in one building, one kit's all you need. If you've got 10 lines in one building, well, you hit capacity, you got two left over, you'll need two kits at that building. So, so on and so forth. But there's a little bit of economy of scale in terms of an equipment footprint that has to be installed there at your DMARC location to convert over your POTS line with the POTS link solution. So that was the last question that we have. Corey, anything that uh, you want to sign out with or add as a final thought for our customers out there? Uh, not particularly, just that uh, if you're a potential customer and I have the pleasure of supporting you, I look forward to that day. Excellent. And uh, my final thought here will be, if you're a customer out there today, we would encourage you go talk to your POTS line provider. If you haven't seen a price increase, be direct with them, be concerned with them because of what's going on in the national climate right there. If they haven't announced when they're turning your POTS lines off, hard press them on that. Don't be taken by surprise if your price increases, if your SLAs really deteriorate, or if they're going to turn off your network. Get ahead of the curve, be proactive instead of reactive. Many of the major LECs have already announced termination dates, termination letters all over the state of Texas, some in Georgia. So the clock is ticking. Don't be taken by surprise and come see us because we are passionate about helping you uh, get a better solution in place. So that being said, we're all done here. Appreciate everybody's time and attention. Um, we'll see you next time.